Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how you can make some exterior stones for your foundation using some cup trays. Okay, the very first thing you need to do is you need to get the kind that has like this really goofy texture and then you just want to start pulling it apart. You do not want to use scissors at all. You want to just tear it freely. And you want to tear it to where it's got like that rough edge on it. Take off any hard parts and then you'll be left with something that looks like this. You can use almost the entire cup tray too when you're doing it. And when it's at a curb, you can just kind of flatten it back out just by manipulating it using your hand. Okay? Even this part, you can take the center of this so it's not wasted. You can get one small size paver. And again, you just manipulate it the way you want it to be. Okay, so once you have that done, get yourself a bag of them. Mark on your foundation where you want to have your stones tape. I went ahead and traced a line all the way around it, and then now I'm going to go ahead and apply them. Okay, so now once you have all of your pavers cut, or your stones, you want to get yourself some wood glue. I'm using Elmer's Wood Glue Max. Okay? And you want to apply it to the surface where we're going to be putting it. Okay, you want to start putting it down rather thick. Okay? Then you want to take like a card or something and spread it out. A good old, old gift card or something like that works perfect. Just go ahead and smear it out just like so. until you get it all good and coated on one area, starting at the corner first. Just go ahead and continue this process. Okay, so once you have that done, then you want to start picking up your stones and you want to glue them to the surface. Make sure you get them right down in there, pretty good. And you can kind of fit them in, work them in like a puzzle, using the larger ones and smaller ones, just to kind of manipulate it the way that you want it to go. making sure you're leaving a space in between each one of them. The space will simulate the grouting area. Okay, and if it doesn't fit in there the way you want it to, that's okay. You can just pull that off and tear it away and then it'll fit, just like that. And take that leftover piece and you can fill it in there. Just turn them until you feel like that's how you want it to be. Remember not to get it um, in front of this line. Keep it 
or behind this line, keep it in front of the line. Because otherwise, if you don't, you'll end up with not being able to put your house back on flat. All right, now this one is a bend, so it must have been part of the one that was bent up, so you have to bend that. And once you bend it, it should go flat. That one I'm just gonna tear. And then again, this one wants to flip up, so I'm gonna help it bend it the way that I want it to stay. This actually gives a little bit more texture than using the egg cartons because the egg cartons are um, not quite as textured as these little um, cup holders. So you may want to um, use this way, but you can definitely use it the other way if you're more comfortable or if you have access to the egg cartons. Now I know all fast food places have these and they always give you them when you get a drink so you could probably go in there and order your drinks and get a cup holder and then over time you'll have a bunch of them and if you call the manager maybe they'll be nice enough to give you some okay so I'm gonna go ahead and continue this process and we'll be right back Okay guys, so now to give it the texture that we need it to have, I'm going to take some non-sandic grout and I'm going to mix it up in some water. Just like that. Now, you just want to keep stirring it until you get it to mix together fairly good. Once you get that done, then you can add some more. Mix that again. You want to continue this process until you get it all mixed up and you want to go slowly with it. Now when you get it like a soup base, that's the consistency you want. Take an old brush that you're not going to want to worry about cleaning out. I mean you can clean it out, but I don't. I just get them from the dollar store. And then you want to brush it on really thin. If your brush is really cheap like mine is and it leaves these little stragglies, pull them off before they dry. Otherwise, it'll be really hard to get them off afterwards. You also want to kind of, once you get it spread on there, you want to go back on top of it and you want to blot it so that you don't have the brush lines.
continue that process until you've done the entire thing. Now if you have spots where your bricks are not quite the way you want them, you can always mix the grout and make it super thick and then put it on there and let it dry that way. Or you can add some plaster of Paris to it and put your own mounds wherever you want them to be. All right, I'm gonna continue this process and then I will be back. Okay, so this is what it'll look like when you have the grout on there for the first layer. Once it's completely dry, you're going to take a brush and you're going to brush off any loose stuff. And then you're going to paint the individual stones. And we'll go through that process next. Okay guys, so now to paint this. I've made a paint palette of some red, some burgundy, like a wine color, some metallic, and some metallic gold. That's metallic silver, metallic white, and then just brown. What you want to do is go around variously throughout the whole project and paint whatever your base color you want to have the most of on here first. And I chose brown. And it's all drying. And basically all I've done to do that is... I just kind of went around and just blotted it. Also, you'll see a couple spots here where I've taken the paintbrush and I've just kind of put it here because this is where the house is going to be. And just in case it decides to show up, you know, where it's not quite close enough, it'll actually still be there. And I'm just kind of blotting it around. It's basically just to have a little bit more there just in case it does decide to show in there okay it's not really going to show but the edges may come out a little bit all right so once you've done that then what you want to do is you want to go back through again and you want to pick the next color that you want so here is the brown now i'm going to pick some burgundy now as you see i am not going to clean out my brush okay going to mix it in with this just a little bit and it's going to give me a different color brown with a little bit more red in it so then I'm going to just go back through again paint all of the bricks in various locations or stones in various locations and you want to go like, I don't know, maybe like every two or three away from each other to keep it pretty uniform. And you can change the color up a little bit and make it darker or lighter. Doesn't matter because you're also going to, once you get all of these colors on here, you're going to go back over top of them with another color or multiple colors to give them different colors. And you can also use like some blues and grays and stuff as well. But just do this again and then when we get it all done and you're gonna keep rotating throughout the colors of whatever color palette you want. And then I'll show you how to add more detail to the top of them. Okay, so once you get to this point, you wanna take a dry brush with a very little bit of paint and you just kinda wanna go over top of it just very lightly with a different color to bring out the textures in each of them just like that the brush has to be dry so that means you just want to take the paint all the way off of it and just leave a little bit on top of it and then that's all you do. It'll just bring it all just like that. OK, 
kind of do that with that color and then go back with another color and continue that process until you get it all done. Okay guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to follow Dollhouse Manager Madness and Tutorials.com. Also, check us out on Facebook, Dollhouse Manager Madness and Tutorials, and on YouTube. Like and subscribe to the channel because we post videos all the time. And leave a comment, question, or suggestion because we love hearing from you. And if you like Pinterest, we have tons of pens on there as well under Laurie Holden Heisler. Alright, thanks a lot. Have a great day.